Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today <clears throat> I am delighted and privileged to welcome an iconic journalist, someone who's a legend in the world of writing, someone I have followed for a long time, Mr. Jag Soraya. Jag, welcome to the show. Jag. Thank you, Ashutosh. Welcome. Lovely to be here. Thank you. Jug is a writer, columnist, cartoonist, and public speaker. He launched the Junior Statesman, which was India's first youth magazine. He's the former editor of the Times of India and has written for several publications. Um, he's 50, he published 15 books. And in 2021, he was honored with a knighthood by the president of the Italian Republic. So Jug, what an amazing career in writing you have had. Let's start with asking you a question. How has journalism evolved and changed over the last five decades? Well, it's, it's, uh, I would say it's been a sweeping change, a mm -hmm. sea change. Um, earlier, uh, when I came into the profession, mm -hmm. um, there was a tendency for uh, the, the editor and his, the editorial team mm -hmm. To, to, to speak down to the readership as though from a pulpit, mm. from, a, from a privileged position yeah. of having greater knowledge about a subject, more in-depth knowledge about it. Uh, that changed. And I think one of the things that uh, happened was mm. that the, the Junior Statesman magazine, which later became uh, abbreviated to the JS magazine, mm. Mm. I think helped to foster that change. Correct. Uh, uh, for, it was ahead of its time in many ways. The, the editor was Desmond Doig, mm -hmm. uh, uh, who, who uh, at that time he was 46 years old. And since this was supposed to be a magazine for young people, mm -hmm. he said he would not. He would edit it. He would be the sort of guiding light behind it. But the actual writing would have to be done by young people. Mm -hmm. So there were three of us, Tabi Bhagat, mm -hmm. Papa Menon, and myself. Okay. Uh, uh, I was 20 years old. I'd just become 20. Wow. Uh, Papa and Dabi were a couple of years senior to me. Mm -hmm. So he, now it was just not possible for three people, even if we worked 24 seven, mm -hmm. to, to, to fill them, uh, uh, you know, 36 pages of a magazine week after week. Mm -hmm. So we had to depend on contributors. Mm -hmm. Who were these contributors? They were our readers. Mm -hmm. So the readers also became the contributors. And this was a kind of uh, a very early avatar right. of mm -hmm. social media or Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, where you, 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 you consume what you produce yourself. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that really was a forerunner. Amazing. And I think uh, today, uh, social media has become a very, very real uh, competitor mm -hmm. to uh, mainstream media. And uh, I mean, there you are, here we are having this conversation, which will very be on well social said. media. Very, very well said. So, you know, uh, continuing from what you just mentioned that, you know, there was superstar journalists yes. who would, you know, and I remember growing up reading uh, Kushwan Singh and listening to his, uh, reading his thoughts and then forming my opinions based on what he would say. And there were many other such iconic journalist leaders. Today, <clears throat> news has been democratized a lot. Yes. What are your thoughts on this democratization of news and each one of us being able to form their own opinions based on news? Yes. Uh, you know, like most things, uh, it can be a mixed blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for each individual, uh, in a free society, for each individual to be able to make up uh, his or her own mind, mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, however, a lot of false news, mm -hmm. misinformation, deliberate disinformation Correct. going the rounds. Mm -hmm. And I think over here, what we need to do is to have a, a code of self-censorship mm. where out of respect for your, one's own integrity, mm -hmm. I will not purvey or convey something mm. which I know to be not an true. untruth. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I, I think that needs to be done. Mm. Uh, I, th I think one of the things is, uh, you know, Opinion should be free of dogma, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
Unfortunately, what is happening, not just in this country, but I think uh, in many other places as well, I think across the world maybe, that we are becoming divided mm -hmm. into two or more camps, mm -hmm. people who are completely for the, 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 the government of mm -hmm. the day Correct. and people who are completely against it. Mm -hmm. And I, I find this, you know, sometimes uh, uh, when I write a column, mm -hmm. uh, I am critical of mm -hmm. the current government as I have been of all governments in, you know, in, the, in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes when, the, when, the, when this government does something which, which I think is good, it's for the public good, and I uh, give it a pat on the back, I, I get uh, outrage from some of my readers right. uh, who call themselves liberals, mm -hmm. who say, you've become a turncoat. Why have you done this? And I said, look, right. come on. <laughs> Let's not uh, put ideological blinkers and, and you know, uh, Correct. ourselves from the truth. Absolutely right. Very well said. Very well said. So moving on, Jag. You know, former editor of Times of India, run magazines. In today's world of technology, some person of my vintage, I'm 65, I still want my newspaper with my morning cup of tea. But I, I, by the time the newspaper arrives at 6.30, I've read all the news on yes. uh, online. Yes. I want to ask you, how is news uh, changing with personal devices? Uh, well, it is. I think news, sorry, I think newspapers, mm -hmm. in my opinion, are becoming more in the nature of views papers, mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the sense that you, you, you okay, uh, a particular event happened. Mm -hmm. How does one interpret this event? Mm -hmm. And there can be many interpretations. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, any publication, which manages to convey the nuances of a, of a situation, be it an economics, a development, a political development, whatever it is. Mm. Uh, I think uh, uh, newspapers do have a validity in that, in that role, in that task. Mm. Okay. And do you think uh, the life of uh, newspapers is finite given the amount of effort that goes into producing a newspaper, especially when you have one-liners coming on every particular platform? <laughs> well, uh, I think that there, uh, uh, some of the articles, mm -hmm. uh, particularly on the editorial page, mm -hmm. uh, could, could, be, uh, could stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. You could go back and uh, say, you know, I read that over there. Now, if I can go back to that, that, that had a few sort of uh, seminal truths, if you like, mm. which, which would be valid mm. years later. Mm. Okay. So, uh, you know, moving on, uh, you know, uh, you were just speaking about, you know, if you write something pro any government, then yes. Yes. this trend seems to be happening all over the world. Yes. But journalists have now got aligned or most journalists have got aligned to one political grouping or the other. Uh, what, in your opinion, has caused this? Because as the fourth state, they have always been completely independent. Well, uh, I don't know about that, Ashutosh, because, uh, for example, in America, there's a tradition hmm. that uh, any given a publication, you take the New York Times, hmm. uh, they will always be... Uh, they will uh, back a particular political party. Mm. <coughs> and this is, uh, I mean, this is done uh, overtly. Mm. Mm. Now, independent journalists, <coughs> I think, uh, should remain independent mm. and free of uh, this kind of ideological bias as far as possible. Correct. Correct. Um, moving on, um, there is a completely new generation of readers who have come. Uh, categorized as the millennials and the Gen Zs. And they have very, very clear views, opinions of what they want. Yes. As someone who's writing even now, I'd love to get your perspective on how are their demands uh, of transparency and uh, true news, etc. How is that changing the way you write? Uh, well, 
first of all, you know, uh, uh, what we call millennials, okay, uh, they can see through hokum. They can see, you know, they can see, uh, you know, someone who's, uh, who, who's being bombastic and pompous and, uh, you know, superior you know, to the, that kind of an attitude. Mm-hmm. They don't want to be lectured at. Mm-hmm. So I think it's, uh, the style should be more chatty, mm-hmm. should invite them, mm-hmm. in, invite them into a process of, share, of shared thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are ways of doing it. Uh, first of all, I think uh, for for a person who's a who's a columnist who's a who's a regular writer, uh, when people ask me that how do you get your ideas, I say, well, you give them to me mm-hmm. because I listen. I listen to what people are saying. Mm-hmm. People of all ages, people of all uh, interests, mm-hmm. and uh, so it is. It is a kind of a feedback. I I I I give back. I try to give back. Mm-hmm. Uh, to my potential reader, what I've heard from them mm. in, 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 uh, uh, in conversation, in casual, casual conversation or something mm. which I've just, just happened to hear. Mm. And uh, what is interesting them? What are they talking about? Mm. Uh, what are their views? Mm. And I try to put this together and I try to understand this and I try to explicate it for myself and for them. Interesting. So one more question related to writing, and then I'll move to Italy and then your books. Uh, I'm going to talk about Junior Statesman, which was such an iconic magazine. Uh, What happened to JS and um, what were some of the problems of continuing it? Oh, dear. Um, You know, the JS lasted for a little over 10 years. The first issue came out uh, in 67. I think it was February, February the 14th, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And it it was killed uh, prematurely, mm-hmm. uh, put to death uh, through summary execution oh, by the then managing director of the statesman. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, on, uh, it, it was in August 1977. Okay. I think it was a, a result of... Uh, a clash of personalities. Mm. Uh, Desmond Doig, as editor of the JS, yeah. uh, had become uh, a bigger public persona mm. than the managing director of the statesman. And I think that caused some problems. Wow. wow. Well, you know, I grew up reading JS, and I remember those five or six part uh, center spread with Zila yeah. Taman, etc. And if today someone was to ask me which was the magazine that you would remember the most, the first thing top of the mind is Jess. You know, so I must compliment you. I'm sure Thank you. people will, uh, will think about it forever. But moving on now, Jag, uh, you have been awarded a knighthood by the President of the Italian Republic. I'd like to understand from you what was it that got you connected with Italy and what was the award for? Okay. Uh... Uh, Buddy and I, my wife and I, mm. uh, we first visited Italy mm. uh, way back in 73. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were on a shoestring budget. Mm. Uh, we, we, we spent a year and a half uh, in the United Kingdom mm-hmm. working. Uh, the idea being that we wanted to see a little bit uh, of Europe, see a yep. little bit of the Western world. Mm. And so we saved up some money mm. and uh, we began to tour Europe. Mm-hmm. And we go to Italy. We were, I mean, you know, it was a sort of a shoe uh, string budget, right. and um, we we didn't have any hotel reservations, nothing, um, mm-hmm. very little money. Yeah. But the but, but the, the the kindliness, the mm-hmm. friendliness of mm-hmm. the people that we met. We couldn't speak any Italian, mm-hmm. but people would go out of their way to to help us find our bearings to, to help us find uh, a cheap pension to live in, mm. uh, find a cheap uh, bistro to eat in. And th- th- there was a, s- such a genuine warmth of welcome mm. that both Bonnie and I, uh, we fell in love with Italy. Mm. Uh, we, we, we loved its people, mm. their friendliness. Uh, their, 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 they made us feel part of their family, mm. part of the Italian family. Mm. We loved their food and their wine and Absolutely. their music. Yeah. So we, 
we went back to Italy many times after that. Mm. Unfortunately, uh, with a little more uh, uh, expansive budget. Correct. And uh, I began to write about it naturally, as I would write about anything else that I experienced. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And uh, when uh, uh, so some of these articles came to the attention mm-hmm. of uh, the uh, the Italian embassy uh, in Delhi, mm-hmm. uh, they they I think they began to think of me as some sort of an unofficial uh, brand ambassador for their country. Okay. Okay. And I think that's where the that's why I was awarded this. Hmm. And you, when I was reading about you, you said you we have been going back at least twice a year. Yes, we were before this pandemic hit. Yes. Ah. And the, the knighthood was given because of your writing? That's right, yes. Wonderful. yes. Wonderful. Uh, I would just like to make one thing clear, yeah. if I may. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I accepted the knighthood mm-hmm. because while Bunny and I love Italy, mm-hmm. we're not, uh, we not Italian citizens, we're yeah. Indians. Yeah. If for any unearthly reason, I'm sure it's never going to happen, mm. if our government, mm. not just this present uh, government, mm. but any government of India mm. were to offer me uh, some sort of a public recognition like that, mm. I would turn it down. Okay. For the very simple reason mm. that then I would feel bounded in my own conscience, mm. not for anything else, mm. not just for the, for, for the sake of the public image. Mm. own conscience, that having accepted something like this, mm. could I in future ever be critical of this government? Right. But since I am not involved with Italy politically, mm. I feel no qualms on that score. Very interesting. So one more question, given uh, the amount of travel that you have done uh, to Italy, what are your thoughts on um, India and Italy at an economic level? We leave politics out. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, what, uh, what are your thoughts on the relationships between India and Italy at well, an economic level? Uh, at the economic level, well, I'm told that there's some uh, 600 uh, odd mm. uh, Italian companies of various sizes in, in various sectors mm. uh, operating in India. Mm. There's a very, very large community of uh, Punjabi farmers, mm. mainly six, mm. who, uh, who, who are in the dairy business over there. And right. all this, uh, this, uh, the, this uh, mozzarella and stuff that, that comes, mm. uh, they, they produce it. So, you know, mm. uh, they're supporting the entire sort of uh, uh, pizza and pasta industry of Italy. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So now I'm going to move to uh, your books. Yes. Um, you've written 15 books. Um, tell me about some of these books and any favorites that you have? Uh, well, it's, uh, you know, the, the, these are all sort of by blows of my mind mm. and uh, one can't uh, uh, disown any of them. Absolutely. Uh, uh, if you would uh, say uh, one of my favorites, well, I, there, there are two books of short stories. Mm. Uh, the, the, there's, there's a book uh, which uh, was first published by Penguin India mm. called uh, Rickshaw Rag- Ragtime. Mm-hmm. which is about uh, sort of my memories of Calcutta. Mm. That was actually a, a, a compilation of uh, feature articles, which I did for the Statesman after the, mm. the, the JS had been closed down. Correct. I joined the Statesman and as a, as a feature writer. Mm-hmm. And I used to write about various aspects of Calcutta. Mm. And I put those together and I added link, uh, linking passages Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the, the book became Rickshaw Ragtime. It's uh, my, my personal tribute, if you like, mm-hmm. to a Calcutta which I knew and which I loved. Amazing. So that's one of my favorite books. Amazing, amazing. And uh, you are absolutely right. I mean, you know, when you, you've written many books, so you can't say this is my favorite child or yes. this is my. But <laughs> yes. there is still some one book that you would, would not say that I worked the hardest on that. Yes. yes. So, uh, Jag, I'm going to move to the last segment of our conversation. My. Uh, Viewers and listeners love to get to know my guest personally, yes. and you are such an iconic personality. My first question to you is, as you look back at life, what would you say are three key milestones or pivot points that you remember? Uh, well, I suppose the first was the uh, my joining uh, the junior statesman, which was to become the Mm -hmm. JS. You know, after I left college, Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh, 
in in college, like a lot of people, you know, uh, I dabbled uh, a bit in what I thought of was poetry, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, I wasn't really a writer as such. Uh, but uh, when the uh, when the Junior Statesman magazine was looking around for writers, mm-hmm. uh, I tried my hand at writing, and uh, I found that I. I uh, I seem to have uh, mm-hmm. a certain uh, knack for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I decided that, well, that, that was going to be my career for life. Mm. So I would say, yes, that was it. Okay. Okay. Um, again, as again, you look back and you're one of the senior writers in our country who uh, have stood a lot by what you have believed in. And even today you've articulated some very interesting points. Uh, my question to you, Jag, would be, what are some of the core values you have always believed in? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was, uh, once when I was asked to address a, a, a class of uh, trainee journalists, mm-hmm. uh, I, uh, I took an article which had been published that day mm-hmm. and which uh, carried the byline. And I said, uh, I asked the class, I said, I want you to look at this article very carefully. Mm -hmm. I want you to think that you are the author of that byline. Mm -hmm. Now, please tell me the two most important words in this article. Mm -hmm. And the two most important words were the name that appeared on the byline. Mm -hmm. I said, those are the two most important words, not from the viewpoint of ego, please. Mm -hmm. Not from that. But if you remain true to that, mm. if you remain true to that, mm. then you will be a good journalist. How amazing. That's your integrity. How amazing. That's your, that's your stamp of excellence, of, of a guarantee that what you see here is the real thing. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, time, I've got some time for two more questions. Uh, my next question is that as you again, you look back, what does success mean to Jug? <laughs> I don't know about success, uh, but uh, I, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, humbling feeling. Correct. Uh, because I don't feel that I've been able to live up to the expectations that Perhaps, perhaps, mm-hmm. uh, my readers have of me. Okay. I don't think I ever will be able to. Okay. That is a humbling statement, given your uh, where you have reached in the world of journalism. And my last question to you, Jag, is who or what inspires you? <laughs> who or what inspires me? Uh, my best critic, mm-hmm. uh, my sharpest critic, is my wife, Bunny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when I get a nod from her after, mm-hmm. you know, when she's just read something which I've which I written, mm-hmm. I say, okay, I passed the test. <laughs> yes, well said, well said. Jag, on that note, um, thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank, thank you. you for talking to me about your incredible journey as a journalist, as a columnist, as a cartoonist. Uh, thank you for talking to me at such length about Italy and everything that you've done for Italy. And uh, from on our personal Lord, thank you for giving the JS to the world when it needed it the most. Thank you again. Thank you, Ashutosh. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.